Russian authorities have woven a web of false information across social media about their forces' attack on a Ukrainian hospital last week even after earlier attempts by the platforms to halt this disinformation campaign. Nearly 20 Twitter, Facebook and Telegram accounts belonging to Russian embassies have dispensed the disinformation, which seeks to discredit news reports that Russia shelled the Mariupol hospital and its maternity ward, killing two adults and a child and injuring 17. The incident has drawn rebukes from the White House and other Western leaders, while Ukrainian President Zelensky called it an atrocity. A photo of a pregnant woman carried away from the rubble on a stretcher has been shared widely on social media, it appears above, and has quickly becoming one of. She and her baby both later died. The Russian embassy in Britain last Thursday published several tweets in the past week about the hospital falsely claiming the facility had been emptied and was being used instead as a military outpost, and later followed up with false claims that images of the tragedy were staged, using Crisis Octo. Twitter deleted the tweets. But over the past week, the same type of disinformation about the hospital has been put out through Russia's embassies in Japan, Denmark, Greece and 16 other nations, reaching an audience of more than 2.4 million on Twitter alone, according to research by Fake Reporter, an Israeli watchdog group Monday. This latest example of fake content from Russia about the war underscores the country's continued ability to weaponize social media, and, in what amounts to a high-stakes game of whack-a-mole, the inability of these platforms to do much about it. Disinformation either distributed by Russia or pro-Russian actors have spread across nearly every major social network in the last two weeks, a river of false content about Nazis in Ukraine's government, military biolabs under Ukraine control, even that billionaire George Soros is secretly funding you.